What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be doing a comparison between the 2020 Chevy Tahoe and the all new 2021 Chevy Tahoe. Let's get into it. So if you guys are familiar with these comparison videos that I do, it's not really like a what's better, what's not. It's more just, here's what the 2020 has, here's what the 2021 has. You guys decide which one you prefer. Now again, the, this is a whole new model, so this is gonna be kind of in limited inventory. There's not gonna be very many of these left once they start rolling these out in a more uh, aggressive manner, which they're not doing right now because of COVID. But again, we're just gonna be kind of showing you everything, saying like, here's what's here, here's what's here. You guys go from there, decide what you like better. And again, these are both premier trims, so they're basically exactly the same price-wise. The 2020, I think, is $74,995, and the 2021 is $74,990. So you get five extra dollars worth here uh, over on the 2020. So let's go ahead and get into it and just start up front as always. Now, real quick, if you guys are into technology at all, like this giant 10-inch touchscreen here on this Tahoe we're taking a look at, head over and check out my tech channel, Mets Tech. I'll have a clip here on screen and I'll have it linked above. Talk about all kinds of different technology from dash cams to regular cameras to Apple tech to everything under the sun that is tech related. I've got about 10 videos up right now and I'm definitely gonna be dabbling more into the car space because that's something that I'm really passionate about. So we'll be talking about technology, talking about cars, and maybe talking about things that we don't specifically have on the lot, and then maybe doing some crossovers here and there uh, with this channel specifically. So head over there, check it out, drop a like, leave some comments, and if you're into it, hit subscribe. Let's get back to the video. Now, both of these have different engine options, but they are both available on the 2021 if you're interested in getting that. But the 2020 has the 6.2 liter Ecotec 3 V8. 22 miles per gallon highway, 14 miles per gallon city, 420 horsepower, 460 pound-feet of torque. The 2021 has the 5.3 liter Ecotec 3 V8, 20 miles per gallon highway, 16 miles per gallon city, 355 horsepower, 383 pound-feet of torque. So a little bit different there as far as engine options go. So up front, a huge difference here is the lighting systems. Now they both have kind of a very kind of cool sculpted angular headlight design, but this is all halogen like across the board, whereas the 2021 has standard LED headlights and LED daytime running lights, which look incredible. They got this really cool blue glow to them from that LED right here on this like little hook part. Over here again, like I said, halogen, uh, you do have front fogs, which you don't have over here on this Premier, but again, that's just, you know, take your pick. The front design of the grille is also significantly different. You've got way more chrome accents over here, uh, kind of a similar kind of jutted rectangular design to the front grille, but again, just a whole different look. The, the 2021 is very distinct. You'll know it when you see it. Nothing fancy in the front part here, nothing fancy in the front part there, but you've got the parking sensors that run around the vehicle. Another big change in the front grilles between the 2020 and the 2021, this 2020 does not have a front facing camera, whereas this does. This has HD surround vision on it as a Premier, whereas this Premier does not. Now, as far as wheels go, this has 20 inch polished aluminum wheels, whereas the 2021 has 22 inch, I guess, chrome wheels. These aren't the wheels that are supposed to be on this one. These are. Moving on back to the side mirrors, this is a huge, huge difference here. These side mirrors, although feature rich, look way, way worse in comparison to these big, bulky, chrome side mirrors, you know what I mean? So these are just body color side mirrors. They've got integrated turn signals, but they're not on the back, they're actually just on the front side with a little arrow that will light up. It has blind spot monitoring. They are power folding, they are heated, and they do have puddle lighting underneath but that's about where it stops. Over on the 2021, you've got this two-tone with this satin chrome piece. You've got integrated turn signals on the back so that oncoming drivers can see. You've got blind spot monitoring, they're heated, they're power folding, and they have that camera built into the side that works with that HD surround vision system. Moving on back to the door handles, you've got keyless access on both of these models. The only real difference noticeably here is that the button is a little bit different looking and the 2021 has this chrome piece that runs around the door handles, but nothing crazy there. Uh, on the steps here, nothing different here. Uh, this is the RST over here, so you've got some RST badging and you've got this powdered Tahoe badge here. Actually, the spacing on the Tahoe word is different. Over on 2021, it's a little more condensed, is over on the 2020, it's a little more spaced out. So just something that kind of separates the two a little bit. Up top, you've got a normal power tilting sliding sunroof. Over on the 2021, you've got a panoramic power tilting sliding sunroof. So big difference there. Moving to the back of the vehicle, they're, they're similar. I 
since I think the 2021 is a little bit more rounded than the 2020 and it has some additional features as well. So over on the 2020 mainly, you've got this piece right here that I think really makes it stand out. Over here, nothing. It's just a body colored piece with a badging. Now again, this is an RST, so it's got some specific badging to that. Additionally, the Tahoe badge placement has moved. It's over in the corner where you normally expect to see it over on the 2020, but on the 2021, that's been replaced with the Premier badging and the Tahoe badging is underneath the Chevy badge here. So other than that, same kind of little spoilery lip here to keep stuff off of your rear windshield. Again, the wipers tucked on both models. Nothing really new there. This just has halogen taillights. This has LED taillights, which I think is awesome. Little Chevy badge inside the LED taillights. No such thing over on the 2020. So additionally, you've got the parking sensors here on both. This one has a chrome trim that runs alongside of it. The 2020 doesn't have that. That could be due to RST, uh, making it blacked out and sportier. You know, it's hard to tell sometimes. Additionally, this has the quad exhaust tips that are actually active, whereas this just has a single exhaust tip underneath that you can't really even see. As far as ways to open the lift gate, you can obviously open it from inside. You can open it using the button here on each handle. You can open it using the key fob and close it using the key fob. Now the 2021 has less overall trunk space. That's A, due to the seats being more upright and less of an angle, but also the 2021 has a longer wheelbase. So you're getting additional space in the back here, but they have similar kind of looks to them. Both have little hooks for a cargo shade. They've got this net here. They've got the tools underneath right here. You can put the rear seats and the second row seats down with the same type of like little button switch things. Button placement has also been remapped. So it's over on the left side. Uh, whereas it's over on the right side on the 2020. They look very, very similar, but just little things here and there that kind of stand out as visual differences. I think for the most part, you're gonna get the same experience other than having the extra trunk space with the rear seats up over on the 2020. Let's hop inside the cabins. All right, so starting in the cabin of the 2020, I think really this is what we've gotten used to seeing in the Tahoes and the Suburbans. This very, very static, similar layout that we've had for I think five years now. I think 2015 was the first introduction of this style of cabin. So I've already made a full review of the 2021. If you haven't seen that, check the link above. But I'm not gonna go through every single thing here in the 2020 because this is the outgoing model year. I'm mainly gonna cover the things that are different between the 2020 and the 2021. And that starts with the, well, basically the full cabin looks different, but starting over here, you've got just different controls. So everything's kind of still here, but just in a different layout. So I'll give you some shots here so you can see kind of what we're working with on each one. You also have the leather wrapped steering wheel. This is a heated steering wheel. It has the adaptive cruise control options, the forward collision alert, uh, the voice assistant and the navigation things. So everything is here. It just looks way different. It looks way, way older. And that makes sense. It's an older model. Again, another thing that's huge and different is this right here. This this column here for changing gears, no longer over on the 2021. We are shift by wire now over there. Push to start engine button is a little bit different placement, a little bit of different look. The vents are different. Again, this has the eight inch infotainment center versus the 10 over there. We'll take a look at that in a sec. Again, you've got just standard gauges right past there. The digital section is super small, whereas it's much larger over there. Again, this has the outdated infotainment center. So that's a big, big difference. Not only is the screen different, but just the actual user interface is their older system. I think it's infotainment two is what we're looking at here. Moving on down, you've got hardware controls as well. This does have the tri-zone climate control system so automatic for driver and passenger and a separate zone for the rear altogether this does not have a rearview mirror camera just a standard auto dimming rearview mirror again just your uh, sunroof controls right here you don't have the panoramic so nothing too crazy up top these are leather appointed seats here so not fully leather but leather appointed with the accent stitching they are heated and ventilated on both sides again you've got the 12 volt outlet here two USB A ports two cup holders center console here with an additional two USB-A ports, a, another uh, 12 volt outlet, and a 3.5 millimeter jack. Nice big center console here. Wireless charging pad for chi enabled devices right up here. Problem is, is that it's kind of small. So like my iPhone 11 Pro Max doesn't fit. You kind of have to put it at an angle. It'll still charge, but it just doesn't fit modern smartphones, which is again, just a sign of its age. Again, just a standard non HD rear vision camera here. No multiple camera angles, uh, no high definition camera, anything like that. Just your standard. 
Now, one of the big differences between the 2020 and the 2021 that we're looking at specifically is this 2020 has a rear entertainment center, whereas the 2021 does not. So this has not only the rear climate control, it also has two USB-A ports, 110 volt outlet, a 12 volt outlet, and it has an HDMI input for the single screen that's right here. If we were to have the rear entertainment over there, you'd have two 12.6 inch screens on the backs of the headrest, independent of each other, being able to control, you know, watch whatever you want on either one. This just has this single old fashioned kind of flip down, you know, DVD player type screen to it. The second row captain's chairs are heated as well. The third row bench is not, but it does have that one touch button like we've got over on the 2021 to lower those front seats so you don't have to pull any handles or mess with that when you're trying to get out. This also has the same 10 speaker Bose premium audio system that you've got over on the 2021. As far as interior design goes, it's definitely, again, less modern, less spacious due to the smaller and shorter wheelbase. Uh, button placement isn't as nice and just some of the accents aren't as premium looking. This has this like quilted faux plastic wood, which I just hate. And it's kind of the same over there, but it's just, it's streaky wood instead of quilted wood. I just, I'm not a fan of that. I'd rather it just be kind of chrome or satin accents with the soft touch rubber or faux leather with the accent stitching. I think that looks way better. But that's pretty much everything here in the cabin of the 2020. Let's hop over and take a look at what you get in 2021. All right, now that we're over here in the cabin of the 2021, First of all, it feels good to be back. <laughs> I was in, I, I just, I don't know, this cabin is so much more spacious and feels less, you know, contained than it does over on the 2020. But I think kind of just showing you the visual differences between, you know, the, the button layout over here and the button layout over there, I think is really gonna be more helpful than me kind of talking through it. But some of the big things I think that stand out when you hop from one cabin to the other are mainly this big infotainment center here. It goes from eight inch to 10.25 inches and it you know stretches out and is removed from the actual center console itself. So it kind of stands out more. The redesigned steering wheel, again, this is the more modern Chevy steering wheel that we're used to seeing. The redesigned button placement over here, you've got a lot less dials and a lot more actual buttons that you can individually push. The gauges past the steering wheel are different. You've got two simple gauges with a little screen in the middle. Again, another huge difference is that heads up display. You've got a 15 inch heads up display on the 2021 here. Not having that gigantic shift column here, having everything be a shift by wire with these little buttons here is a huge difference. Again, vent placement is different. The center console stack layout is different. Depending on what trim you're looking at, you can actually use a button to slide the center console back so you get actually more space and more easy access for rear passengers and stuff like that. There's just a lot of modern functionality. Again, rear climate control here with the tri-zone climate control, heated and ventilated seats on both. These are full leather seats where those are just leather appointed. These have the accent stitching with the accent trim as well. Same Bose system, kind of the same interior stylings. Like I mentioned, quilted wood over there. This, it's glossy over there too. This is kind of a matte faux wood with just kind of like natural streaky wood with this accent trim. So again, I'm not a huge fan of faux wood, but it's what you get anyway. You also have some more modern ports over here on the 2021. So instead of having all USB-A ports, you have some USB-A ports and some USB-C ports along with your 12 volt outlet, another USB-C port, another USB-A port, an SD card slot. You got a gigantic center console here. And then in the back you have additional, I think USB-C. Yeah, two additional USB-C ports. And then you have two 120 volt outlets, one here behind the center console and one in the trunk as well. Now, one thing you don't have, which is interesting, is you don't have a 3.5 millimeter jack, which if you think about it, makes a lot of sense because modern smartphones don't have 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks. Not everybody has a smartphone with without a headphone jack, but I bet most of you do. Even some of the older people that may be watching this video, I bet if you check the bottom of your phone, all you've got is either a lightning port or a USB-C port, depending on whether you're on Android or iOS. So I'm fine with them taking up the 3.5 millimeter jack, but it is kind of an interesting omission here. It may be a little early, but we'll see. An additional difference between the 2020 and the 2021 is the 2021 has the rear view mirror camera. Again, different placement on the wireless charging pad, still Qi enabled wireless charging, but much larger to fit modern smartphones. And they moved it from here down to here. Additionally, you have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which you do not have over there on the 2020. Another thing that I mentioned over there on the 2020 is that you have the option to get a rear entertainment center on the 2021. This does not have it here on the Premiere, so that's a big kind of upgrade if you really need that for the same price point. You maybe have to look over in the 2020, or you just may have to add the option to the 2021, but you get two 12.6 inch displays on the backs of the headrest, which can be independently operated to view whatever shows you wanna watch specifically or whatever content you wanna watch specifically, or you can share content to the different screens or even to the driver screen, which is really cool. 
cool. I'll definitely be making a video on that when we get one that has it. Other than those visual things, there are a couple kind of under the hood things that set the 2021 apart. Again, I discussed this in my full review, but the 2021 has a longer wheelbase. So not only does that make for a smoother ride, you know, uh, easier handling, things like that, but it also allows for the third row passengers to have 40% more legroom, which I think is super significant and worth the extra money for the 2021. Additionally, the 2021 is built on the new T1 platform. It's what the 2019 Silverado and some of the new Cadillacs were built on. So this is, you know, helps again with that stability and that updated handling and all that kind of stuff that makes a big difference. If you drive the 2020 and then you drive the 2021, oh boy, you are gonna notice the difference. Now you have magnetic ride control over on the 2020 and you definitely have it here. It's the newest generation of their magnetic ride control, but you also have a four corner adaptive air suspension system. And I think that's mainly what you're gonna notice when you're driving between the 2020 and the 2021. So another little change is that the key fob has been redesigned. So on the left here is the 2020 key fob, on the right is the 2021 key fob. All of the button functionality is the same. The placement is a little different and the design of the actual key itself is a little bit different. So you've got lock and unlock on the top row. Uh, on the 2020, you've got the remote start in the middle with a single, uh, I think it's a push and hold. And then on the 2021, it's a double tap uh, on this button right here. Then you've got your rear lift gate button. So if you double tap, you can open the rear lift gate with this button. And then this button down here is actually to open the rear window. So if you double tap that, the rear window will open. And then you've got your panic button just the same. Hidden key inside. And then on the back, you can see a little bit of a redesign as well. Updated Chevy badge, updated positioning. So it's, you know, vertical on this, horizontal on this. You've same, got the same kind of like chrome reflection bit, but then the texture on this one is updated. It's got an actual little bit of texture to it where this one's just a kind of soft matte plastic. All right, guys, and those are the main visual differences between the 2020 Chevy Tahoe and the all new 2021 Chevy Tahoe. Drop a like on the video if you loved it. Tell me in the comments down below, which one do you prefer? Have you watched my full review on the 2021 Tahoe? If not, it's linked above. Go check that out. And please consider subscribing if you like this content and hit that bell notification so you're among the first to see every single new video the second I hit publish. We'll see you in the next one.